Hi kids, welcome to Terry on Tuesday. So, good morning everyone. It's about half past eight in the morning. And uh, I've been up, I've been awake for about an hour, but I got out of bed about ten minutes ago. So, um... Yeah, this, as you'll probably know, this is a last minute emergency. I'm making a cup of tea, by the way. Tea? Coffee. I'm making coffee. Um, there's no water in the kettle. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so um, this is a last minute emergency uh, video because, uh, I, as usual, I've got too many things on my plate. And if I just put this down somewhere, it will be less vertigo inducing. Sit on the plate rack. Sit on the plate rack. Eh. So yes, um, I'm going to um, tell you about some stuff that's been happening. Uh, really busy day yesterday. Uh, today's the 11th of July, yeah? And uh, I've got bad hair, obviously. Stay hydrated, kids watching this and you haven't had a drink of water in the last 20 minutes have a drink of water it's very important anyway um so um yesterday july the 10th monday was the uh deadline the the improved the moved deadline for bloody students um we were auditioning for our two lead actors, our two new lead characters, because uh, the two we originally cast, uh, while I love them with every fibre of my being, uh, are basically just too in demand. Um, they couldn't guarantee that they'd be free to shoot all through 2024 for me, with me, etc. So, um, uh we put a call out for two new actors um originally well, getting noisy originally the deadline was um 31st of july or, th or the first of august basically end of the month and i realized sorry i'm having a problem setting this up um and i realized that uh The end of the month is probably too long and anyway we had a very good response from actors and actresses to play the two leads so um, what I decided to do was move the deadline forward to the 10th of July which was yesterday because we've got enough to choose from and even even as I started um, sitting down with my co-producer Andy to make some decisions about these actors um, we still had auditions coming in at the very last minute, which, admittedly, guys, it's not the best policy. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if anyone thinks that, oh, if I send my audition in last, it'll be fresh in their minds when they make decisions. Um, I don't think it works like that. I think you're better off sending your auditions in as soon as possible, as the casting is announced, because that way... Shut up, Kettle. Um... Because that way, you know, you stay in the minds of the, the casting director or whoever, you know, a bit longer. Anyway, that said, um, I was hoping to make the announcement about who the new lead actors are in the film. And I can't because we had some last minute auditions in for the male role, 40, and... Um, Basically, uh, I need to meet up with... I've met a couple of the actors already. I need to have another meeting next week. Now, it gets all complicated. Um, we have cast the female role of Trish. Okay? Uh, firstly, I want to say thank you to every actress who uh, sent us in an audition for the role of Trish. Uh, it was... Very varied, very difficult, 
uh, with all different levels of experience and different types of performances and you know then there, there's other things to consider like their availability and the location and and even things like height you know because uh, while uh, the role isn't specific to any you know particular ethnic uh, what's the word race or whatever um, it's still needed um, a certain, people of a certain height because if someone's really tall they they instantly look older but also in the film our mummies are about six foot three six foot four maybe a little taller um, but if you cast a six foot actress it's not going to look right is it you know I don't want to start working weird angles to have people look shorter than they actually are or taller than they actually are uh, in my last film we had I didn't pay much attention to the height of the actors and so we had you know female actors of five foot three talking to actors who were six foot four and uh, it was just a bit skew whiff anyway um, so all my students are all sort of definitely under six foot basically anyway that being said we have cast the role of Trish um, so I can announce that one let's have a fanfare <laughs> ladies and gentlemen I would like to I'm very proud and very happy and very chuffed and very excited to announce Ruby Atlanta or Ruby Atlanta Boland to give her a full name uh, is playing Trish in the film um, with auditions, I've always said I I hate the sort of rejection process. But uh, the problem with the rejection process is you have to, you know, let the majority of people who auditioned know that they weren't successful and kind of give them a reason why. I try to give everyone a bit of feedback. But as you can imagine, a bit like X Factor or something like that, when you, when you see the audition that stands out uh, head and shoulders above the rest. Of course you want the best person for the role, but you see um, their audition, you see their headshots, you see um, their you know CV of past work, and uh, you just go, ooh, ooh, the game has changed. Player two has entered the building. Enter the building, enter the game. Sorry, I got that wrong. Um, but yes, um, you see someone who you go, wow, they're actually so good. I'm wondering if we could actually in interest them in the film. And Ruby came along and it was a case of, wow, she's like perfect for the role. Uh, when I say perfect for the role, um, she's different from our previous actress who was playing Trish. I'd say pretty different. Um in terms of personality and look and everything else, but the the uh, obvious talent and skill was obvious. Obvious talent is obvious. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, Ruby blew us away, um, and you know it's not to say that the other applicants were bad, but when you get someone who is clearly you know at the top of their game at this point in their career you go oh we, I, I want that i want that one in my film because they're great so guess what uh we've got ruby playing trish in the film and i can't wait to uh get to know her and start talking about the the role a bit more and uh chuck of the script and you know and get her on camera and you know, get on with it and uh, that would be so cool uh, now, things are slightly different with the 4D character because, as I said, we had a couple of last minute um, things. I have met with some of the actors already, the actors who are kind of the most likely to, to be uh, the, the final decisions. Um, and the, the meetings have been great, but also the meetings have frustrated me a little bit because I'm like, oh man, I want to cast all of them, but you can't cast them all. They can only be one. As Christopher Lambert once said, there can only be one. There only can be one. There can be one. There, there be one only can. Um, so um, as a result of the last minute uh, 
auditions that we that came in literally, you know, sort of, uh, blimey, late, sort of, I don't know, 5, 6 p.m.-ish, I don't know. Um, I have scheduled another meeting or two, and that's was, that was going to happen this week. I was going to meet them this week and have a chat and a talk and get to know them and get to see them. Um, but I can't do that. Why can't I do that? Well, I'll tell you for why. So. Coffee without sugar. Give it a chance. So, what was I saying? Yeah. The reason I can't meet any of these uh, last minute actors right now is because uh, this week has suddenly become very, very interesting. Uh, now, yesterday I had an email from comedian Little Britain, Downton Abbey, um, uh, many other comedy things. The Curious Orange himself, Paul Putner. His agent gave me the green light to film with him in September here in Wales. So he's coming down. So that is going to be just uh, mind-blowing, really. Um, I've always loved Paul's comedy. And, uh, you know, he's just an inherently funny guy. Gotten to speak to him on the blower. And, uh, yeah, hit off. Nice guy. Really nice guy. Um, can't, you know, can't be thankful enough to his agent um, and him, Paul himself for being willing to give my film a little bit of star quality. Um, so he's coming down in September. I'm really excited. So that's all locked in. So like in the Kickstarter, I I did say that he had agreed in principle to be in the film, but he's agreed uh, properly now. You know, we just got to send him an agreement, basically. Um, but the agent said he's available, he's willing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that is an exciting thing. Now... While that was good enough for one day to make me very, very chuffed, um, something else happened, which I'm not going to tell you about until Thursday, okay? It'll be on my social medias, it'll be on the website, Bloody Students, be on my Instagram, Bloody Students Instagram, etc., etc. Um, but what I can say is I've got to go to London really early in the morning uh, to film the very first footage from Bloody Students. <laughs> Excited or what? I'm actually going to direct uh, the first bit of footage for the film on Thursday morning, kids. And not only that, it's going to be shot in London. And as I say, Thursday, I'll, I'll spill the beans. But all I can say for now is um, it's another very exciting uh, cameo. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, I, no, I don't want to. I don't want to go any further. I don't want to go any further because, look, best laid plans, right? We could have rain. It could be all sorts of stuff. They could. They could announce a lockdown tomorrow. You know. So look, it's Tuesday today, Thursday morning. I'm off to London really early to meet up with a cameraman and our previously unannounced cameo actor. Um, this is. The reason it's got to be done Thursday and not next year or in September is because this actor is only available for a very short time, but they were good enough to let me know that they're available and willing. Um, so I did a heck of a lot of um, arrangements and, and phoning people and all sorts of stuff to get this to happen. And um, it's happening. It's happening. It's, it's, it's really rare that we're going to get this done. And I'll explain more on Thursday why it's rare and why it was difficult and almost impossible to get done. Um, but it's happening. So uh, I get to officially direct the first shot in the film. Uh, it's not the first shot in the story. It's, you know, we're shooting out a sink. But, uh, oh my goodness, you know, this uh, is going to be exciting. So stay tuned on Thursday uh, on all my Facebook and my social media and all these other things. Um, the The Instagram is at bloody students movie the twitter is at bloody students where the two o's in bloody are zeros i'll put them down here and uh yeah so that's that's what's happening um 
congratulations again to Ruby for getting the role of Trish. Um, the rest of the actresses uh, were all good in their own ways, uh, but you just kind of have an idea of what the actor is supposed to look like, the character is supposed to be. Uh, Ruby, you know, slipped in and went bang, and you go, that's that's our Trish. Um, the other actresses, not that their acting was bad or, or wrong in any way, it was just that, you know, you've, you when it comes down to picking something, you just gravitate towards the one you think is right for the job, and that's the case. Um, but, the, you know, the cool thing is, everyone to everyone who's auditioned who may be watching this, A, thank you, and B, I cast most of the people in Offworld, my first feature film, um, based on people I've known for four or five years. Um, the lead actress, Danny, who is now co-producer of the film, I met her four years. Oh, and also Amy Rowlands, who played Alexa in the film. They're there. I met them both about four years before Offworld. And I didn't know I was making Offworld. It was just I met them for an audition for something else. And I was like, oh, these these actors are great. I'm going to use these in future if I, if something comes up. And I did. And now they're both, you know, main actors in a feature film that's out in the States getting uh, marketed and sold as we speak. Um, so the chances are we'll meet again. If you auditioned for any of the roles in Bloody Students, uh, chances are... If not for bloody students, it will be something else. Um, I, I know people who make films all the time, and uh, I'm hoping I will make another film after bloody students, and I don't know what that film would be yet. Um, but now I've got your headshots and your phone details and your uh, auditions, I know what you're capable of, so we may meet again. So anyway, so that's it for this week. Uh, again, apologies for no progress on the... Uh, no promised progress, as promised, um, on the Vlahurg helmet thing. Um, but all I can say on that is uh, I've been speaking to uh, a guy I know who can probably make me a metal frame for the big horns. Remember I was talking about horns last week? Um, so that looks like a, a, a very interesting option. And uh, I've got to get back into contact with them and send them some sketches of what I want. And they can... Uh, they can fabricate a piece of metal for me that will help mount the horns on. Um, I've had some suggestions from, from last week's video of how to do the horns, etc. So that's cool. Anyway, uh, I've talked enough. Um, that's it for now. I've got another busy day today. I'm recording the audiobook of Welcome to Neverberry from Chris Lynch, who was a co-writer on Offworld. Uh, his new book is out there. It's uh, It's all set in a fictional town. As you can see, it's it's Stranger Things meets Inside Number Nine meets Tales of the Unexpected. It's dark, it's weird, it's it's black humour, it's... Oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Go to Amazon. It's only two ninety nine for Kindle at the moment. The physical copies will be coming later on, but I'm currently recording the audio version for Audible and Amazon, which is my first Audible book, and I'm super excited about it. I've got that to do. I've got paperwork to do um for you know for the film i've got a prep for thursday morning and uh oh you're gonna you're gonna love it you're gonna love it when i come back on thursday and, and tell you what it is i may even do a little wee youtube video right here on youtube just to tell you uh what i've been doing who i've been doing it with how it went and how excited i am um and how knackered i am from such an early morning anyway that's all from me for this week uh keep it here and i will speak to you very soon take care now Bye-bye then.